Welcome back to Learning Solidity. Now in this tutorial I plan to cover the basics of imports and libraries. In our previous tutorials we were using the same source code. I felt this was getting a bit cluttered so I thought I'd start again, especially since we're using imports to try and keep things a bit cleaner. Now what I'm going to do first is create our base structure. So I'm going to create two files. The first is going to be our library and I'm just going to pretty much just call that library. And then the second file that we're going to be using is going to be our test library. So I'm just going to stick with that. Okay, so in our test library, what we're going to need is our basic um, sort of definition of solidity. So if you remember from our first tutorial, that is pragma solidity and then hat 0.4.0. Now obviously, like previously mentioned, you could use other versions of solidity, but I'm going to stick with this for now. Um, you're also going to need that in your library as well, so I'm just going to quickly copy and paste that over. Now I'm just going to basically show you the uh, sort of like a very loose and easy way to use imports. Now it's it's very straightforward, so you're probably going to be able to figure this out quite quickly. Now in library, I'm just going to create a very quick contract. Now I'm going to delete this shortly, so it's not too important. Um, I should call it libraries uh, just to stop uh, the conflict of name with the reserved word library. So Inside there, we've got libraries and all that is a basic function, um, test. No functionality required for it, but there we go. Now, if I jump back into test library, there is nothing there, but simply if I import, now I believe you do need the full path. So in this case, actually, I think I can just get away with library. So I should, I don't know, it's going to be browser. What's that library? So there we go. Uh, that's just the side note when you're using remix everything's in a folder called browser but the actual directory you're in is above browser so from there all i can simply do is create a contract and um, call that um, use libraries and is libraries and there we have it so now i should have all the functionality of library within the use libraries which is giving me the test function. Okay, so that is just the very basics of using imports. Now you can use imports as in um, sort of remote imports. So for instance, if I wanted to use a, a GitHub source, I could simply do something along the lines of import um, github.com forward slash will scale forward slash um, then the, obviously your project. And then finally, the solidity that you want, or the solidity file that you want to use. So in this case, it would be like library or something like that. I don't actually have anything there, but that's an example if you wanted to use something remote. Now that would work, but obviously it can't find anything. So that is just just a very basic example of using that. Now, as this tutorial is also going to cover libraries, I'm going to go back to calling this and um, test library. I'm going to leave the import in place because I'm going to now jump into our library solidity file. Now, let's get rid of our contract because we don't want that. What we actually want is a library. Now, this is going to basically be sort of an extended um, functionality set to uh, unsigned integer. You could obviously expand this in a much more sort of um, useful way, such as adding more functionality to strings, because I know in Solidity strings have uh, quite a few limitations, which I might actually cover in a later tutorial. Uh, but for now, all I'm going to do is add a little bit of extra functionality to an unsigned integer. So in our library, we're just going to call it um, int extended. Now inside int extended, all I'm going to do is add two functions and those are just simply going to be function uh, increment, which the first parameter that you're going to need to pass when using the libraries like this um, is the actual instance that you want to increment. Now we're modifying existing um, sort of, I'm going to say, I don't really want to say an object because it's not really an object, well it kind of is, so we'll stick with that. Um, so we're modifying an existing object, uh, but in this case, um, we're going to be passing in an unsigned int. So it's a uint, and I'm going to call that self. So with that, what we're going to do is increment it by one. So unfortunately, because we are modifying the value, we also have to return the value as well. So that returns a uint as well. And because it's an increment, um, I'm just going to simply increment it by one. So that could be return... Uh, underscore self plus one. Now I'm going to do the same thing with decrement as well. Function uint underscore self 
and that's going to also return a unit. So in the same sort of structure, underscore self, minus one. Now you can actually pass additional things to this as well. So I'm going to do, um, actually I've got to add two more functions to this. Um, function increment by value. And that's going to take the first parameter of the instance you're actually modifying. So you int self and then you int uh, value. And again, you need to return a uint. So instead of just incrementing by one, what we're going to do is return underscore self plus underscore value. Same for decrement as well. Function decrement by value uint self uint value, and we're returning another uint. A bit tedious, I know. Return underscore self minus underscore value. Okay, so that's our library uh, functionality. Oh, why is it complaining? Uh, oh yes, sorry, it needs returns. So all that is is int extended. Now we should have access to int extended in our test library. So jumping straight back to our test library, all we're gonna do now is extend the functionality of uh, an unsigned integer. And to do this, um, you simply state uh, using, I believe I called it int, Extended for uint. So now any uint also has all the functionality of these four functions that I've defined in my library. So let's go ahead and try that out. So let's first create a test class, or sorry, a test function, test increment. And I'm actually going to allow the user to pass in a base value. So uint base returns. Um, stick to return to uint as well. So in that, all I'm going to simply do is increment the base. So that's simply return underscore base dot increment. So as I've actually extended the functionality of uint, I now can obviously use any of the function any of the functions I've defined within the library. Now this is limiting me to just um, just the uint. So for instance if I was to specify uint eight that wouldn't work because obviously I've only extended the functionality to uint. Now if I want to extend it for all integers, I can simply specify star. The only issue with specifying this as star is that I've also applied this to strings as well and any other data types that you might want to associate to this. So for now, I'm going to be quite um, explicit in my definition and stick with a uint. I'm also going to write another function, test. Uint underscore base, and for that one we also want to return a uint. So return base dot. Now I'm going to do the same for the other two functions, but instead of typing them, I'm just going to copy and paste because it's a lot quicker. And increment by value. And for this one, I'm also going to allow the user to pass in the second increment as well. Same for decrement by value. Uh, yeah. You probably already gathered that this pretty much does the same thing in both cases. But regardless, now what I'm going to do is create the test library. So we can see that working. So we've got, um, first we've got our test decrement. So I'm going to start with 10. Now, if I run this, what it should do is return me a my base value decremented obviously by one. So it's going to return me nine. Obviously, the decrement by value start with ten, comma, I don't know, five. Sure. It's going to return me five. If I want to increment, so again, ten test increment should return me eleven, and finally, ten, comma, five again will return me fifteen. Okay, so that is just the basic extension of functionality to a pre-existing object using a library. Now you can use a library in a static context as well. So let's just take the first two functions as a, a prime example. Now we can simply reference our functions within our library by specifying int extended dot increment. And obviously because we are not using a, a value as a baseline, um, we need to pass the value in as a function. So we can do the same for both of those. Should it be easier if I just did that? 
space. Now, if I build the contract again, um, test contract, and again, it will have the exact same functionality. So this should return nine, and this should return 11. And that, in a nutshell, is pretty much how you can utilize libraries within Solidity. Obviously, you can expand this in a much more broader term or broader context. I've just tried to keep things very simple and very straightforward. Um, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for me here. In the next tutorial, I do plan to start looking at the transactions and how to actually send a transaction to your, con uh, to your contract. Um, without necessarily specifying a function because a lot of users will simply want to know okay I want to send for instance um, just X amount of Ethereum to a contract and I want the contract to then just automatically process that so that's pretty much what I'm going to cover in my next tutorial but for now I, I'll leave it up there now I hope you found this useful if you did give us a thumbs up and a subscribe and I'll catch you next time